Two towers, two nations, one title. In the heart of Saudi Arabia, a competition is unfolding that has nothing to do with oil and everything to do with altitude. On one side, Jeddah Tower, a structure that's been climbing toward the sky since 2013, designed to pierce through the 1,000 meter barrier. On the other, Rise Tower, a proposed two kilometer giant that would make Jeddah Tower look modest by comparison. But here's what makes this interesting. One tower is actually being built right now with 81 floors already standing. The other exists primarily in architectural renders and press releases. So which one will actually claim the crown? And more importantly, which one can? Today, we're going to examine the engineering, the economics, and the reality behind what might be the most ambitious architectural race in history. If you're enjoying this deep dive into the world's tallest buildings, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos on mega projects, architecture and engineering marvels. Let's start with the tower that's actually taking shape. Jeddah Tower sits on the northern edge of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, as the centerpiece of Jeddah Economic City, a mixed-use development along the Red Sea coast. The design comes from Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, the same firm behind the Burj Khalifa. In fact, Adrian Smith was the lead architect on the Burj, so there's a direct lineage here. The exact height remains officially undisclosed, but most sources place it at approximately 1,008 meters, roughly 180 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa's 828 meters. That's not just breaking a record, it's shattering it. The design is striking, a three-petaled footprint that tapers as it rises, inspired by the folded fronds of desert plants. This isn't just aesthetic. The shape is engineered to reduce wind forces by essentially confusing them. The wind hits different surfaces at different angles as it spirals upward, preventing the kind of unified pressure that could cause dangerous oscillation. Inside, the tower will house a Four Seasons hotel, luxury residences, office space, and service departments. The highest observation deck will be on one of the upper floors. The building is designed to flex. At the top, it can sway up to 1.5 meters, which is intentional. Rigid structures in high winds don't survive, flexible ones do. Construction began in 2013. By 2018, the tower had reached approximately 63 floors when work suddenly stopped. The reason? A combination of contractor issues and Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption purge, which saw several investors detained. For seven years, Jeddah Tower sat frozen, a concrete skeleton on the edge of the Red Sea. Then, in January 2025, construction resumed. As of mid-December 2025, the tower stands at approximately 81 floors. That's real progress, roughly one floor every three to four days. The pace is aggressive, and the target completion date is now 2028. The total cost is estimated at $26 billion, though that figure includes the broader Jeddah Economic City development. The tower itself represents a fraction of that, but exact breakdowns aren't public. Here's what matters. Jeddah Tower is real. You can see it, you can measure it, and if construction continues at this pace, it will become the world's tallest building within three years. Now let's talk about Rise Tower. Proposed for North Riyadh as the centerpiece of a futuristic district called North Pole, Rise Tower is designed to reach approximately 2,000 meters, nearly twice the height of the Jeddah Tower and a staggering 1,172 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. The numbers are incredible, roughly 678 floors, making it the first building to break the two kilometer threshold. The design, reportedly by Foster and Partners or a collaboration involving HKS, won the 2025 WAF X Prize for Climate and Energy Innovation. The renders show a sleek tapering structure with integrated renewable energy systems and vertical green spaces. The location is strategic. North Riyadh, near the airport, tied to Saudi Arabia's Expo 2030 bid. The estimated cost is around $5 billion, though that figure seems low given the scale. But here's the critical detail. Rise Tower is still in the proposal and planning phase. Designs were unveiled between 2023 and 2025. Bidding and tendering are reportedly ongoing. There has been no groundbreaking, no foundation has been poured, no steel has been erected. The most optimistic projections suggest construction could begin in 2026, with major progress aimed for 2030 to coincide with Expo. But even if construction started tomorrow, completing a two-kilometer tower by 2030 would require a pace of building that has never been achieved in human history. For context, 
The Burj Khalifa took six years to build and it's less than half the height of Rise Tower. Jeddah Tower, at roughly 1,000 meters, has been under construction on and off for over a decade and still isn't finished. So the question isn't whether Rise Tower could be built, the question is whether it will be built and on what timeline. Let's talk about what it actually takes to build something this tall. At 1,000 meters, you're already pushing the boundaries of material science, wind engineering, and elevator technology. At 2,000 meters, you're in uncharted territory. Wind is the primary enemy. At extreme heights, wind speeds increase dramatically, and the forces on a building become exponential, not linear. Jeddah Tower's three-petal design is specifically engineered to disrupt wind flow, but at 2,000 meters, you're dealing with wind conditions that are closer to what aircraft experience than what buildings typically face. Then there's the foundation. A building this tall requires a foundation that can distribute millions of tons of weight across unstable desert sand. Jeddah Tower uses a massive piled raft foundation, essentially a concrete slab supported by deep piles driven into bedrock. For Rise Tower, you'd need something even more robust, likely requiring new techniques or materials. Elevators present another problem. The Burj Khalifa's elevators travel at 18 meters per second and the cables weigh 13 tons due to their extreme length. At 2,000 meters, you'd need multiple transfer floors where passengers switch elevators because a single cable can't safely span that distance. This isn't impossible, it's been done in other super tall buildings, but it adds complexity and cost. Then there's atmospheric pressure. At 2,000 meters, the air pressure is noticeably lower than at ground level. This affects everything from HVAC systems to human comfort. You'd need pressurized floors, similar to an aircraft cabin. And finally, there's sway. All tall buildings sway. The Burj Khalifa sways up to 1.5 meters at the top. A two kilometer tower could sway several meters, which is within engineering tolerances, but requires advanced damping systems to prevent occupants from feeling seasick. None of this is insurmountable, but all of it is expensive, time consuming, and requires breakthroughs in construction technology. Here's where things get complicated. Jeddah Tower's construction stalled for seven years, not because of engineering problems, but because of money and politics. The 2018 halt came during Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption crackdown, which saw Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, one of the project's key backers, detained. When funding and political will evaporate, even a half-built tower sits idle. The recent resumption of construction signals renewed commitment, likely tied to Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 initiative, which aims to diversify the economy beyond oil. Jeddah Tower isn't just a building, it's a symbol of that ambition. Rise Tower faces a similar dynamic, but with higher stakes. At an estimated $5 billion, the project would require sustained political and financial backing over a decade or more, and that estimate seems conservative. Most experts believe a two-kilometer tower would cost significantly more, potentially exceeding $10 billion when you factor in the engineering challenges we just discussed. Saudi Arabia has the money. The Public Investment Fund, which is reportedly behind Rise Tower, manages over $700 billion in assets, but having money and spending it are different things. Mega projects compete for resources, attention, and political capital. And Saudi Arabia is already funding NEOM, the Red Sea Project, Kidia, and dozens of other Vision 2030 initiatives. The question isn't whether Saudi Arabia can afford Rise Tower, it's whether they'll prioritize it over other projects and whether they'll maintain that commitment through the inevitable delays, cost overruns, and technical challenges. So who wins the race? If we're talking about the near term, the next five years, Jeddah Tower is the clear front runner. It's already under construction, it's making visible progress, and barring another major halt, it should reach completion by 2028. At that point, it will be the world's tallest building, and it will hold that title until something taller is finished. Rise Tower, if it gets built, won't be completed until the 2030s at the earliest. Even if construction begins in 2026, a realistic timeline for a two-kilometer tower is eight to 10 years, putting completion around 2034 to 2036. But here's the twist. Mega projects in this region have a history of delays, redesigns, and cancellations. In February 2024, Imar announced that Dubai Creek Tower, originally planned to exceed the Burj Khalifa, had been redesigned to be shorter than the Burj, with completion now expected in 2028. That's a project that went from world's tallest to not even close in a single press release. The same could happen to Rise Tower. Designs could be scaled back, timelines could slip, funding could dry up, 
or the project could be quietly shelved in favor of something more practical. The race for the world's tallest building has always been about more than height. It's about ambition, national pride, and the desire to build something that makes people look up, literally and figuratively. Jeddah Tower represents the achievable. It's ambitious, but it's grounded in reality. The engineering is proven, the construction is underway, and the finish line is visible. Rise Tower represents the aspirational. It's a vision of what might be possible if everything goes right, if the funding holds, if the engineering challenges are solved, if the political will remain strong. One tower is a bet on the present, the other is a bet on the future. And in Saudi Arabia, where Vision 2030 is reshaping the entire nation, both bets are on the table. So which tower will ultimately claim the title of world's tallest? Jeddah Tower will almost certainly get there first. But if Rise Tower is actually built, it won't just break the record, it will redefine what's possible. The race isn't over, it's just getting started. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment which tower you think will win, and subscribe for more content on the biggest engineering projects on the planet. Hit the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching.